All right, let's dive into a mystery that I'm sure a lot of you have run into. It's a classic Proxmox paradox. You've built this incredibly powerful server, but when it comes to one of the most important jobs, backups, it's just painfully slow. Does this sound familiar? I mean, you've got this absolute beast of a machine. You're expecting everything to just fly, but your backup speeds are just crawling along. It's super frustrating, right? Well, today we're gonna crack this case wide open. And here's where it gets just wild. We're seeing backup speeds of around 200, maybe peaking at 350 megabytes per second. Now that might sound okay, until you realize this is happening on a Gen 5 data center NVMe, a drive that can push over 10,000 megabytes per second. That's not a performance gap, that's a canyon. And this is what makes it so baffling. The hardware is just top notch. We're talking 24 cores, a quarter terabyte of fast DDR5 RAM, and that screaming fast NVMe drive. The system's not even busy. So where is all that speed just vanishing to? Okay, so like any good detective, the first thing we've got to do is check the obvious stuff. Let's start ruling out the usual suspects. Is the CPU getting slammed? Is the system out of memory? We got to clear these first. First up, the CPU. Take a look. While the backup is running, the CPU is just kind of chilling out at around 30% usage. It's barely breaking a sweat. So nope. The CPU is definitely not our problem. Well, what about RAM? A measly 3% usage. The system has tons of memory just sitting there, completely free. So, the CPU is fine, the RAM is fine, the physical hardware isn't the problem. So what in the world is actually going on here? So, if it's not the hardware, our investigation points to something a little more sneaky. The problem isn't how powerful your server is, the problem is the layers of virtualization that are getting in the way. It's the hidden cost. And this brings us to the core of the issue, virtualization overhead. See, every single time software has to pretend to be hardware, you know, like making a virtual network card or a virtual disk, it adds a tiny, tiny bit of delay, a little bit of latency. Now on their own, these delays are nothing, but they add up and they can add up to a huge performance killer. And that leads us to our two prime suspects in this performance crime. First, the overhead from the virtual network interface card. The virtual NIC. And second, the latency from having a virtual disk that's sitting on top of the host's logical volume manager, or LVM. Let's break down that first one. When you run your Proxmox backup server, your PBS, inside a virtual machine, all of that backup data has to squeeze through a virtual network card. And that creates that overhead we were just talking about. For massive transfers like a big backup, this really starts to drag things down, especially if you haven't done extra tuning like enabling multi-queue or jumbo frames. And our second culprit is just as bad, if not worse. The PBS virtual machine is writing its data to a virtual disk. But that virtual disk isn't a real disk. It's just a big file sitting on the host's own storage, which here is LVM. So every single time you write data, it has to go through the VM's virtual disk layer and then through the host's LVM layer. It's an extra, totally unnecessary step that adds a little delay to every single read and write. So now we get to the big aha moment. When you put these two things together, you create what I like to call the virtualization trap. It's an unbelievably inefficient setup that basically forces your backup data to run in circles. Okay, let's follow the data on its crazy journey. First, the system reads data from the source VM you're backing up. Then, that data travels over the virtual network to the PBS virtual machine, which, remember, is on the exact same physical server. The PBS VM then writes that data to its virtual disk, which then has to be written by the host's LVM layer right back to the same physical NVMe drive it was just read from. It's insane! Your data is literally doing laps inside your server, getting slowed down by virtualization at every turn. So, how do we get out of this trap? How do we fix it? Well, the solution is actually way simpler than the problem. We just need to get rid of those extra virtual layers and let the backup server talk more directly to the hardware. This chart really makes it obvious. Instead of running PBS in a full-blown VM, you can either install it directly on the Proxmox host, what we call bare metal, or run it inside a much more lightweight LXC container. Look at the difference. Complexity goes way down, you completely eliminate that silly data loop, and you get direct access to the raw performance of your hardware. Now I know exactly what some of you are thinking. Wait a minute, isn't it a terrible idea to put my backups on the same server I'm backing up? If that whole machine dies, I lose my VMs and my backups? 
And you know what? That's a totally fair and really important question. But there's a smart way to deal with it. The key is just practicing good storage hygiene. First rule, always use a separate, dedicated physical drive just for your backups. Keep it totally separate from your OS drive. That way, if your Proxmox OS drive fails, no big deal. You just reinstall the OS on a new drive and remount your backup volume. All your data is safe. And of course, for real deal disaster recovery, you should be syncing those backups to another PBS server on a totally different machine anyway. So let's wrap this all up. The biggest lesson in all of this and in any performance tuning is simple. Measure, don't guess. You have to use the right tools to get hard data. Otherwise, you're just flying blind. So if you only take away a few things today, let it be these. One, virtual layers always add overhead. Two, avoid running PBS and a VM on the same host it's backing up. It's just a recipe for slowness. Three, installing on bare metal or in an LXC container is almost always going to be way faster. And four, please, please use a separate physical disk for your backups. And how do you measure? Well, one of the best tools for the job is FIO, the flexible IO tester. You can run a command just like the one on screen here. Run it once inside your VM, then run it again directly on the host. The difference in the numbers will be undeniable proof. It cuts right through the guesswork and shows you exactly how much performance you're losing to those virtual layers. And all of this leaves us with one final big picture question. It's so easy to just throw faster hardware at a problem, but as we've seen, that's only half the story. So the question you should really be asking yourself is this. Sure, your hardware is fast, but is the software architecture you've built on top of it actually letting it shine? 